All right, in the last video we talked about Ohm's law a little bit. We talked about how the, you know, if you have a battery and a resistor, you can find the current from Ohm's law, just saying that delta V equals IR, okay? That's the simplest case. I did talk about the concept of an ohmic resistor and how that's very important, that the, the idea is that if the resistance is constant, okay, I put that on the left side and I circle it, so that means that's constant, if I increase the voltage, I increase the current. So in this example, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that and what that means in terms of the graph. So if I have a voltage versus current graph like this, right, and I want to find a slope of that graph, what does the slope represent? Well, we, we just set up here that the resistance is going to be uh, V over I, right? So, okay, so I could take uh, a simple graph here, so I could say, okay, so let's say that I have a voltage here, and it gives me a current here, okay? So what does that represent? Well, okay, let's take a look. So let's say that I have some voltage here, some current here, so if we're talking about the slope of that graph, right, it's going to be the, the y over the x, right? So the y value is going to be v, the x value is going to be i. So it's going to be v over i. So the slope of that graph is going to be r. And the slope of a line is constant, right? Slope of a line is constant. So in an, in an ideal situation, no matter what's going on here, that v over i is going to be constant no matter what. That's ideal. That's the situation here. So we have v and i again here and so on, okay? So we're just going just on and on and on like that. You have a, a line, right? No matter what, V over I is constant. This is a simple case of direct variation. Say they call that V1, V2, V3, I1, I2, I3, and uh, passes through zero, zero. So I know that just V over I is the slope because it's direct variation. Remember, direct variation is just uh, Y equals KX, it means it passes through the origin. It's a simple case of a line, mx plus b. It's just that there is no b. The b is the intercept at zero. Now, that's ideal. So this situation here is ideal. Does a resistor really behave like that, though? I mean, is that can we say that that's something that we can count on? Well, sort of. Let me let me tell you what I mean by that. All right, so let's take this down. Let's redraw these and take some of this stuff out here. Um, let me just erase these <clears throat> so we can start over. And talk about the reality of the situation here. <clears throat> when I apply more and more voltages, I'm not going to be able to get uh, a current that's going to rise to infinity. It's just not practical. And what happens is as you start to apply more and more voltage to a wire, let's just say, you are going to get more current, that's for sure. But as that current builds up to stronger and stronger and stronger currents, what's going to happen is this little wire is going to heat up, okay? And as you get increase the temperature, you increase the resistance. So I want you to think about that for a second. Like if you're in a room Let's say there's a room here with a bunch of people, and you want to get across the room, but there's people in the room, right? And you want to get to this side of the room over here. You want to go over here. Now, if those people are standing still, right, okay, th that would be like a low temperature. You can kind of walk around them, do whatever you want to get to this spot without much resistance, right? Low temperatures, low resistance, okay? So that's the opposite of what I just set up here. So low temperature, low resistance. But let's say that you went to a rock concert and there's now, instead of just these two people here, right? Let's say that you have, um, you know, 5,000 people and uh, they're all, you know, they're just everywhere. And they're bouncing around and they're making noises and they're, you know, they're making, a, you know, a chaotic scene, right? And so you had a bunch of these people just bouncing around the room, and now you want to go to the other side of the room. What's going to happen to you? Okay, so let's say you want to go over here now. 
and you're at a, a small concert, there's 5,000 people, you're going to try to go across and you're going to get bounced around, you're going to bump into people and you're going to try to go across and, and eventually you'll get there. But it's going to take you a long time. So the same thing happens to a circuit. As I start pumping more and more and more electrons through, that heats up and then they can't go much more. So I, I can basically keep cranking up that voltage. But really what's going to happen is at some point, as I increase the voltage, the current is going to stop responding. And then eventually this graph will actually break, go boom, like that. Okay, So that would be uh, the meltdown point. It would actually melt down the wire, the wire would break. And that's what a fuse does, like on a fuse box. Okay, So again, this is ideal, this, this black graph is ideal. Okay, and this red graph is reality. That's what really happens. Uh, eventually, you crank up the voltage, and it just the, the current just stops uh, applying. It's like it's like if you're coaching athletes, and your voltage is you yelling at them, "Go, go, faster, faster! Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going! Run faster, 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 faster!" There's just a certain point to where they can't respond anymore to the coach, and then eventually they melt down, they collapse. Right? That's what happens in the wire too.